Welcome to my interview series, The Tipping Point to Success. I interview top German designers to take a closer look at their path to success. Is there a decisive event that become the cornerstone of their success? To become a serious designer is a calling. I hope that through these interviews, you as a person interested in design will better understand the why of a designer. Why am I doing this? Or as a young designer, you will get valuable suggestions for your own way. My interview today is with Joa Herrenknecht. She founded her own independent design studio in 2012. The Berlin-based studio works multidisciplinary on product design, packaging, and interior design. With an interest in new materials and clear formal language, using minimalism and reduction combined with soft lines and fine colors, Joa creates unique pieces intended to be used at home to evoke a smile. Often your objects surprise that they have a special twist to them, a poetic touch or light sense of playfulness. Back in 2016, Architectural Digest magazine studio Herr magazine named her one of the 50 best designers in Germany. Studio Herrnknecht has received many international awards. Joa currently lives and works in Berlin and has a young child with the Canadian-American artist life, Laubier Parsons. So now, a very special and warm welcome to you, dear Joa. I'm very glad to be with you online today. Oh. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Fine, thanks. I'm very excited, in fact. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> to begin with, I would like to talk about your life path and briefly look back at your childhood and youth. You are born in Saskatoon in Canada and grown up in Southwest Germany. How did it come about? Um, actually by chance. So my mother and or my parents were in Canada during that time. Um, but they never intended to live there. So um, my dad's from Germany, from the south of Germany, from Baden-Württemberg. And we went back when I was, I think, maybe eight months. But I kept the Canadian citizenship because I was born there. Oh, so I, really, I do feel more German than Canadian, I think. So, um, so did you? Parents have any creative professions? Did they have any direct influence to your profession today? Um, they did not really. So my father is an engineer. Um, and my mother always liked art. And um, when I was maybe 12 or something, she started to become a ceramist. So she, she has her own um, ceramic studio at home and she would get classes to um, at the Volkshochschule to parents, to kids and whatnot. But that was almost um, when I was older, when I was an, as a teenager. But my grandmother had an upholstery, my grandparents on my father's side. And I really enjoyed to stay with them. Um, as a kid, we would hide with a in the attic where they had like a lot of different materials and they would upholster sofas and they would always have like a car which they upholstered mm -hmm. and carpets and stuff and I think I really always loved to be in the in this uh, workshop of my fa grandfather and uh, actually my father's brother who was older than my father he took over and then um, now it's in the third generation, my cousins are doing it. I have really always loved to go there. And um, as a kid, they had like a wooden floor and they had a stove, like a chimney stove in the studio. And they 
they always had like around eight or 10 workers who were hammering and working on wood and um, they had a lot of materials there, leathers and stuff. And I really, really appreciated going there. Did they also rework old furniture or more modern yeah, ones? Yeah, I mean, it's a classical upholstery. So they work on old, old furniture. And um, back in the days, I remember they also dried um, hair of uh, horses, rosha, oh, okay. all the mattresses and stuff. And I always thought it was so interesting or they would work with carpenters to, um, it was more renovation of things. But I really, I really enjoyed being there and seeing the process of how, how they were sewing leather and stuff. So I think that was a big influence in a way. Could, could you help a little as a child or? Um, not really. Maybe we would sort things or we actually, we did a lot of mess. I mean, they had like in the attic, in one of their attics, they had a foam um, storage mm -hmm. and we would just jump on there <laughs> and, and things like that. But in my memory, it was a nice place. And my um, grandmother was a good sewer. So she could sew something quite quickly, like a bag or something. And, and I do think that that time sort of, there was something that I really liked. Mm. And I never, I never worked there really, like I on vacations, I think two or three times I was there, but I always looked at the sample books. Mm. I love doing that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, in another life, maybe I would live in the village and help them or something. <laughs> it's a nice job but of course it's like in a village so when you live in Berlin I mean that opened a whole horizon I mean I, as a kid I really loved to look at um, El Deco and all these magazines mm. and spend hours and um, actually initially I wanted to be and become an architect um, and I did an internship because when I studied in 2000, yeah, in 2000, um, one or two, you still had to do internships. So that changed quite a lot. Um, today, you don't have to do that. But you got a little book that you didn't really have websites of schools back then. Yeah, I so, can remember that very well. And you had to do, like, you got a little book. It was a Studienleitführer or something. Yeah. And you had to look at the different schools and some schools didn't really, the uh, websites were rudimentary, like almost non-existing and you knew the date when you had to apply and you had to make a map and they told you in this book how long you had to do an internship. So initially I went to an architect. It was a quite a good architect and where we lived in the, the village or town. And after doing this for three months, he really took me aside and said, I don't think you should do this because I am always having such a hard time. He's a very good architect, but he has problems every day. And he said, you should look into design because you can really um, see the process much quicker. It doesn't take you two years to build a school. Mm -hmm. And I was always interested in residential, not really in skyscrapers or something um but i did like it did open a horizon and i didn't know that many designers i mean back then i knew uh, philip stark mm. but um, 2000 was quite early still like I, I wasn't exposed to like the classical product designers um and then only i think only later i knew I mean, we had brown things at home, but I didn't really know about Dita Rams or something until later in, when I studied. But so I did this. I liked it actually at the architecture studio, but I understood like we did a villa and he um, at this internship and um, somebody, the tile maker, did the mosaic wrong and he had it all ripped out and we mm. knew it would take forever for them. And it, and it was seeing this, I actually thought, oh, gee, you really have a lot of problems. And so I went to um, a carpenter so as an internship, did that for a while. When, when, when was that? In fact, 
ja, ja, ja. Ich habe das all. Ja, ja, das war all before um, I applied to study. But then basically I did my internships for one year. So it was after school? After school, yeah. And, And I also traveled. Like, during school time, did you there a lot of art? Or, or did you yeah, have a special on, teacher? Yeah. Uh, an honors art? Um, for sure, art was always like a thing. And we had good teachers in my schools. And um, I did um, Kunst LK, which I really uh, loved. And English, of course. And um, And I, I really remember we had a good teacher. I mean, we went to Italy and stuff and we were allowed wow. to like, um, in, my, in my class, we were allowed to um, paint the school and the, the pictures are still there of that time. And I, I think that's quite amazing. Like we did some wall art, which wasn't amazing, but I also did um, the school yearbook. I mean, these are small things, but they lead you into this direction. Mm -hmm. And back then you really had to do a layout and I helped that teacher and it was also like, I think we had Quark Express, but it was also oh. um, complicated then. And now it's so like more easy to generate a design because you have the computer, we learned it. I mean, when I applied, I applied to different schools. In the end, I ended up in Karlsruhe because I really liked it. Just the ambience was really nice. It was a half gay Karlsruhe. It's an old, um, old fabric and it's a lovely space. You can look and, it up. Yeah, and I was reading that you had uh, professors like the designers Volker Albus, Stefan Dietz, James Irwin, and I think also Werner Eichlinger must be in Karlsruhe. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. Like, um, so I applied in Berlin. Of course, I wanted to go to Berlin. And I also applied in San Francisco. And, um, but when I went, I didn't want to go to San Francisco. I had a boyfriend then in, in Germany. And when I went to Berlin, I didn't like it so much. I mean, they had like, I don't know, they, they, they had like three PCs and almost none, no max and stuff. And then I went to Castle and Castle, they had so, so much money. During wow. um, it was also, this school is quite special. It's set uh, in between two museums. So there's the ZKM mm. and the modern uh, museum. And in between you have this sort of laboratory school. And uh, the director back then was Sloterdijk, which is a philosopher. So everything was quite um, open. And the ambience was so nice. Um, when we applied, you had to go there with, you sent in your map, I mean, of like 12 things. I don't know if they even do this mm. anymore. Um, and you had to take the train and uh, organize somewhere to sleep. And it was all quite nice. And they organized uh, a breakfast, the students. I think second semester had to organize this breakfast and third semester or fourth, they had to take you to the room where we, you were interviewed. And I remember being interviewed by um, Hannes Wettstein, <laughs> a really nice uh, designer from Zurich. He died later, but It was really, I just thought, sometimes you have this feeling where you get interviewed for a job or something and you just think, oh, the, this is the right place. Even mm. if it's in high school, people are nice, it, it feels nice. And until I finished my studies, I really loved it. And the good thing about small um, cities to study is that you really get to know the professors. It's so boring for them that they, they actually do stuff in the evening with you like go for a drink or a meal and stuff it was really a chance like james elvin he came from milan and um and he was really there he didn't have anything to do so he was having lunch with you and things like that which possibly in other cities i don't think in bigger cities if you went to shanghai or um, mm -hmm. then they would just go home to their studio and, and work i'm not sure if they would have so much time so I really enjoyed it there. And other people came. I mean, Inga Sompe was there. 
Nathalie Grassi. Uh, really, a lot of people came during that time. Stefan Dietz. Really great. This yeah, yeah. A very good opportunity. Not a lot of yeah. universities accept that, I think. Yeah. And I think one of the gatekeepers maybe was also Werner, um, Werner Eislinger, for one. He was one of the youngest um, professors back then. Mm -hmm. I think he was like 36 or 37 when he started. And um, he was a professor, I think, when I was there. Um, he must have been around 40 or something. But it was always for a project base. So they wouldn't stay for long. They would stay oh, for okay. three, four years mm -hmm. and then leave and come every week or every second week, mm -hmm. but then for three days or something. So you really had the opportunity to talk to them and prepare during the, the time. And then Volker Alves, I really like him. I think he was a very good professor. He was opinionated, which was also, he was quite strict. He would not have wanted to cross his way because um, all our presentations were public. So when you did something, you had to speak up and, and these, the building is uh, made in a way that has extremely big halls. So everybody, the passerbys from a museum could listen or you could see other students listen from somewhere. And the space was really big. So you could feel intimidated, but you really learn how to talk in front mm -hmm. of a mat and, and present yourself. And I, I did enjoy that quite a bit. Yes, it really sounds uh, that you had a very good experience. I think so. Like um, maybe some people didn't, but I, I really liked my time there. And most friends that I have are still from this time. Wow. So it really, um, coming from a small village, it really opened my mind to see designers and uh, media artists and graphic designers. Mm -hmm. um, Rambo was one of the graphic designers and in photography there was um, there was also a lot of good people there so you, and, and then you have the philosophers and the art theorists and it, yeah. I think it's such a nice time to study actually I mean it's it's widening your horizon for sure and during that time you did a four-month course uh, four-month stay at Studio Luigi Colani oh, yeah so I found out that uh, Kolani was actually there and he was quite old by that time. And um, he must have been in his seventies, I think. Not too old, but still old. older. And, um, and I went there with a friend and we just applied. And, um, how and how did you come there? Wasn't it very know. difficult? No, I think... It's funny because if you if you make it, it's not difficult for you, right? But obviously, sometimes you have to try many times so you get get where you want to. But in that time, I think we just I'm not even sure if we we send a CD in or something. I mean, it was a very different time where you applied with a CD. Um, but we got there and I, um, I was there for three months with a friend of mine who's also a designer now. And, um, and we had a nice time there actually. I mean, he's quite crazy or he was quite crazy. Um, he always wore white, white clothes and he had a little bit of this um, age star um, aura where he had a lot of time, sort of, but very ambitious still. And he came at six o'clock in the morning and we only started at, I think, 8.30 or something. But he was already there doing his sketches and stuff. And it was really a, like uh, working for somebody from a different aura, like time. Mm. And and I, I really enjoy older people too. Like I really like to um, listen to them and I think it's always fun. But um, he did have a lot of projects going on. So... At the same time, I thought it was interesting, like in terms of style, I think, um, I mean, he, I don't think today I don't relate to his style or his, mm. his thing, but there was a vision about him, which I really liked that he went to the studio every day. It didn't matter Sunday, Monday, 
but it was really like a religious thing where he did and he he was nice to us i mean he has a lot of um star allure but um he was actually nice to us um to the to people mm -hmm. and something he had somebody who worked for him for quite a long time an assistant i don't remember his name but he would always work all the time and then take off and he had a house in australia and he did seem very he kind of seemed a little bit eccentric and that was actually his assistant he knew what to do like he knew everything mm -hmm. and that was also the time where i realized that a lot of designers actually have an assistant uh, in the back who backs them up and, and he's actually the person who knows everything it's quite interesting to see i saw that later in other studios too But that was the first um, internship. And then I worked at the graphic studio and, and I always worked a little bit somewhere aside. And I worked in the museum in Karlsruhe where Boros came. Um, I don't know, maybe you well, know him as an art collector in Berlin. And all these things. How did that come? Do you always want to learn something new every day or? I don't think that all the other students also did so many practical courses in studios like you. Or? I'm not sure. Um, I try to stay active for sure. Mm. Um, I mean, you have so much time as a student. I, I could have done much more now when I think about it. But I always enjoyed doing something, being a teacher assistant or the student speaker or I don't know where the energy came from but it's fun to be active i mean you it's i think what i really like is also meeting people yeah. i really enjoyed this i did i was a teacher assistant for someone and that was really fun like we had to recruit um designers and speakers and it was mainly landscape architects and stuff but um it was fun to actually call them And really like Peter Akonchi, uh, some people who wouldn't come where you knew that they wouldn't come, but some came like Beth and Hughes or something from them. And, um, and that was kind of nice. And then um, she was not my professor, but I worked for her. And I had a little studio space or office there. But she, she saw, she recommended going to Patricia Recula, which I hadn't really thought about it. And um, and I did. And first, I wanted to go to see, uh, do an internship and work for someone in New York. And I went there, but um, but it was too crazy in a way. I, I got it the internship, but then I think a week earlier, I got the invitation to come to Patricia Ocola in Milan, and I went there for the for the talk. For the interview and I just thought it was perfect so I cancelled the place in, in um, New York right. I went to Milan and that was one of the best times I had between studying and my time in Milan I really thought that uh, being in Milan really opened my mind totally like how people live and how interested people are in design and that was very different to like Even the students I knew, because you would meet people who really had something to say, who, who were older, mm. and uh, really so infused with design in a nice way. Where yeah. it was did a discussion. You, it was. Did you learn Italian for that, or did they have so many different people from all over the world yeah. that they all spoke English? They really had everybody from everywhere. Um, when I started, we were 12 people. And after a year, when I finished, I, was, I started as an intern and then stayed as an assistant. We were 28 people. So mm. the studio really exploded yes. um, in that time. And people came from wherever. And most people are not there anymore. I think only two or three are there from the first team. But I was really in the first team. And then people from these... 12 people, I mean, people became other designers who are now well known. Um, Christophe de la Fontaine has a really nice label in Germany mm. and, and others. And one of my best friends is from that time. 
She's a German and lives now in Berlin. And I think that time in, in Italy was really important for me. So I often like to tell people when they're young, it's good to actually go abroad. Mm. I, I don't think I've ever been afraid of doing that. And um, I've always enjoyed like going somewhere else and experience another culture and stuff. And Italy was really amazing, I think, for mm. my I've, Didn't you wish to stay there? I did, in a way, but I also wanted to finish my studies. So some some people stayed, and um, like my one friend, um, she went on to work for James Irvine and such. Mm. Um, but I really wanted to stay um, stay in, in high school and finish my studies. I think that was really important for me. And it took me a long time because... Yeah, I, I was side distracted often. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you graduated in Karlsruhe, but after that you went to New York and there you, uh, you've been a design assistant at Draw in New York. This is a very, very interesting uh, design studio, I think, because they have a lot to do also with architecture and also like uh, mankind, the relation to nature and very modern themes. Mm -hmm. I think the experiences that I had, they always sort of did stuff for the interior as well. I mean, even as crazy as Kolani was, but he also thought about architecture. I mean, he was really mm -hmm. thinking about the city in, in China and we had a model there and stuff. Um, Yeah, so after I graduated, I wanted to go to, first I worked for a summer for an artist in Berlin, um, which was also fun. And then I went to New York because a friend of mine from Milan, she was working there as a chef designer. And I got the opportunity to go there and, um, and it was fun. But at the same time, I realized that people in New York are crazy and they work a lot you have a very few time for yourself and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that like to totally give me up um, but in it, Milano, was, it seems to it was the same like you yeah before. but you would go for a coffee in the afternoon you would have a really nice lunch and you would in the evening also do something together and in a way I missed that a little bit but It was also fun to be there in New York, for sure. Um, and I decided not to stay in New York, also because I had like a, a relationship that didn't work out in New York. So I did try to find the furthest away point and went to Australia <laughs> and studied graphic design. I mean, it was really over Christmas that I decided I didn't want to go back to that relationship. And, and I wanted to still do something with my time and not just work. And so I went to um, Sydney and studied graphic design at a private college. And, um, and that was actually also nice because it was completely different to how I studied before, so open. But it was really uh, very concrete. Like you got in, in the morning, you got uh, back in the evening you had to do homework all the time. And I was also interested in graphic design. And in Australia, I really liked it. Um, I wanted to stay in Australia, actually. And I started my first job. And then a friend that I had, um, who is actually from Toronto, but um, was in New York for a long time, He wanted to start a studio and we were thinking about would we go to London or to New York or where or Sydney seemed so far away. And, um, and that was actually the reason I went back to Berlin. It wasn't because I wanted to and um, go to Berlin back then, but I wanted to work with Antonio, which um, funny enough, he introduced me to my husband now, my partner. Mm -hmm. And um, and we wanted to work there and he was totally burnt out. He was an art director for Biden and Kennedy, which is an advertising company. And he was a little bit burnt out. And 
wanted to party and after two months I was like geez we had a studio and everything but he wouldn't show up and uh, I just didn't know what to do and we liked each other but um, I just thought if I move from Sydney here and I'm not working mm. I'm lingering around it won't make me happier and eventually uh, we separated and um, and I just thought about what to do and during that time I actually won the Red Dot Award for a lamp that I had done mm -hmm. as a student, but a company had taken it over and sent it in and stuff. So they asked me if I could extend the collection, if I could do more, because it was really two lamps and I extended the whole thing and I got work. So I looked for a studio and that was actually the initial start of my, my career. So I kind of fell into it I actually was thinking about art direction, graphic design, and all of a sudden I got back into product design and, and I liked it. It was okay. And then funny enough, like Tony um, later introduced me at a party in New York to, to my now partner, which is also funny because if you think about it, there was not much reason for him to be in Berlin. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> Yeah, really, it is. <laughs> so, so, and, and in Berlin, be, because of uh, doing all these other products uh, related to these lamps, um, you founded your studio. Yeah, I just thought, okay, now if I'm not doing the art direction thing, I will do my own thing and then I'm reliable and I know uh, if I'm lazy, nothing will happen. If I'm doing something... Mm -hmm it's going forward and I did it and um, I got a really nice studio and I was dating another designer at this time from Munich and it also like he was he was um, already accomplished and he told me to get an assistant and I really I was just like I was overwhelmed because I just started but I hadn't really done a plan Mm -hmm. Then I thought, okay, I should go to a design fair, but I wasn't sure about the product I would show. And that back then it was this, um, DMY, initiated by uh, Werner Eislinger, an old professor and others. And, and I sort of stumbled into it. So the first year I didn't really know I did uh, this design fair and design boom, picked it up. I did some lamps out of Tyvek, out of paper. Uh, but it was still kind of figuring out what I wanted to do. And then my, my then boyfriend said I should get an assistant because it really structures your life. And I was so afraid, but then I did it because I had so much work and I was by myself. Oh, that's great. And, and it was the best thing I did, actually. It's really nice to have an intern or an assistant because you have to structure your, mm -hmm. your day. You have to really think about what you want to do. You have to make a plan for the day or for the week or for the month. And then there's a rhythm. And going to fairs and exhibiting for the first mm. year, like Salon Satellite, which is a furniture fair for young talent. In during the main affair in Milan, it's always in April. It really structures you. Like um, you're not that fast when you do product design things. It's no. not that How did you get all these customers? Was it from mouth to mouth because of your first work or? Uh, no, it was really like, um, so uh, it was really like going to this fair, to this talent show. So I went yeah. to my first fair in 2013, then I did 14 and 15. You were allowed to do it three times and you had to be younger than 30, mm -hmm. which I was. And then, um, And then at the first fair, I, I thought about products that I wanted to do and show, but it was really self-initiative. So I didn't just want to do a carpet. I did a carpet and a vase and a plant and uh, candle holders and uh, um, a table. And you went there to find producers. That mm -hmm. was the initial thought. We weren't supposed to sell anything at these fairs too. And this is like the core, I think, of the old school um, furniture or product designer in my mind, 
which I kind of relate to when I think of Milan and all these old designers who actually did everything, right? Mm. They didn't just do classes or something. They were author designers and they worked with companies. And so at my uh, first um, fair, I did it with five people and we shared a big booth. Um, different companies came and they wanted to publish things and um, one company came from New York, um, Design Within Reach, which I didn't really know and, and the here they're like one of the biggest um, guys and they have Herman Miller in their program, a lot of designers. And then Bolia came and it was really just like a getting to know each other. And, um, and out of this time, a lot of things happened. Mm. The second year I went and the third year and the magazines came and all these interviews happened. And then, so I did 13, 14, 15, 15, I was pregnant. Yeah, I think I was seven months pregnant when I did the fair and I did, a, I had a booth with my friend um, from um, Hamburg and it was really a little bit on the edge. I mean, uh, seven months pregnant, you'd sit there every day for a week and stuff. And, but it was really still fun and, and I had interns who came along and stuff. So it was a good time. Mm. And then I got a little bit crazy when my son was born, my first son. And uh, I did an interior job for um, a, a fitness uh, company in Berlin. And, um, and yeah, and then I had to step down a little bit. So I knew like I was I starting, I, first I had a studio, but I had to move the studio to my living room because it was too much. I always wanted to be there for my son as well. Mm. And so I stepped down after a year, I think in 16, 17, I, I really tried to make it a little bit more calm. And then I got a new studio because um, working from the apartment was too crazy. And then I got a new studio um, just around the corner in Berlin. And, and we worked there again quite a bit. Um, and often for Bolia as well, but also other studios. And um, I did a textile collection with a really nice company from Norway. And some Scandinavian brands and it was a, a nice time I think in a way I really liked I really like to be in Berlin I think I still think that Berlin is a super place in Europe ah. mm. and, um, does childcare work well in Berlin? How in Berlin it does, yes yes yeah yeah I mean you get uh, you get uh, um, kindergarten for free and now everything is different with COVID. Um, mm. But yes, it's great. I think it's a really nice place to have a family in Berlin. It's great. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought that because it's such a big city and with small children, it's not easy in a city, I think. Yeah, I mean, one of the things is that um, our grandparents weren't around. So oh. we parents are from Toronto and my parents are in the south of Germany. I think that's a real thing um, if you want to be active. And now with the second child, I mean, for sure, we're thinking about things like that because you have to organize your, your day and stuff. Mm. And, um, childcare is until four, three or four. And if you want to work, I mean, you need the time, right? So that's for sure something to structure. Yeah. Mm. About. And um, Berlin, I think it's really definitely the capital of design studios. There are so many design studios I found out. And is that a curse and a blessing at the same time? Inspir inspiration and com competitive? Or how is it? I think it's good. I, mean, I think I always enjoy when there's a lot of creative people there. I think mm. it's really good. And I think it's good to be in a big city uh, like Berlin. 
I think I'm not, actually not sure um, if it has the most studios. I mean, there's like London. Yeah, I mean for Germany. In Germany, for sure. Mm. Um, one of the reasons I went to Berlin or stayed in Berlin was because in Munich, actually, there's really good designers. Or during that time, there was really good designers. Um, I mean, Gritchett, she moved to Berlin later, but he was like, um, like a design guard in, in, in Munich. It was such a present thing. And then my professor Stefan Dietz was there and uh, Nitzan Cohen was there and mm -hmm. really strong men were there. And I thought Berlin would be a nice place to go as a young woman because it, it wasn't defined as like a male design city or anything. And, um, and it gave you the freedom to like try out and be in, in inspired by other things. Right. There's a lot of international influence. I mean, my partner, I say, I can't say boyfriend because we're too close, but um, and we're not married yet, so, but I say partner. Um, Leif is, um, he's American. He was living in New York for a long time, for 25 years, and then came to Berlin and doesn't really know how to speak German. Mm -hmm. he gets by quite well and um, so there's a lot of international people from Israel, from, from London from New York, from everywhere and that's actually get quite good and I think that there will be a lot of new studios in like 10 years or 15 years mm -hmm. because there's a lot of international people which you might not know yet besides the German ones so that's great yeah, and uh, right now you spend a lot of time with your family in Canada, like mm -hmm. I heard of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you are, right now you, you did some holiday in a small cottage and spent Christmas and New Year's Eve there. I saw your photo at Instagram, it looks really very wonderful with the snow on the trees and all that. Yeah, it's quite a nice place. So um, we are trying to spend some time here for sure. And now with the lockdown, we're here. Mm -hmm. And um, Leif's parents live here. They're both artists, which is nice. And, um, and we're thinking about where we want to live in the future for sure. Mm -hmm. because it's quite close and um, to New York, it's not far. It's just an hour by plane and um, I would like to stay in Berlin, so I, for sure I will keep my studio in Berlin and we're based in Berlin, but um, we will see how we can do this transatlantic mm. thing. I mean, that's a little bit on top of everything. If I was by myself, I would stay in Berlin for sure, but of course you have a family and, and you have to think about it and we have two kids, so my youngest son is one now. And um, so we will see where we will stay on the long term, but we will always keep a foot in Berlin for sure, or in Germany. I feel very close, I think, to Europe uh, in a way. And I think most of the companies that really I want to work with are in, in Europe, mm. maybe in Japan or something for the future. But we will see how the transition could happen how I could um, be able to work in, in the States. But I think if traveling is possible again, you will be fine. I hope so. I mean, this is a very special time where really yeah. as a family, you also have to find out how you structure your time because um, possibly the schools are out again and, and the kindergartens and everything for a longer time. So. You really have to think about how do you want to work because the kids are there all the time. And um, if you have to decide between your job and, and your children, I'm, I'm sure you know the answer where you want to be, right? So yeah, I think that's a very special time to think about what's happening. And yesterday we heard that uh, Maison Amchi, it's a fair in Paris, it's not happening. 
So I think that maybe Milan will also be cancelled, which was cancelled yeah. last year. Yeah. And that's also quite an impact on the industry. I mean, uh, I kind of wonder, the last fair I went to was in Cologne. Mm. We did a booth for a client and the uh, design of his um, booth there and, and a new sofa. And it was really the last time he could show it. And he, didn't, he wasn't able to show it anywhere else. And, and also special for a young company who's doing uh, a new project where to show it, if not online, right? So I think there will be a lot of changes in a way, the way you work and where you want to live and such. Yeah. I think it's nice to live in a city personally, but maybe there's examples in design. There's Nils Holger Mormann who's who's not living in a city and is quite doing doing well still so i don't know who knows yeah yeah we will see the time will show mm -hmm. so this leads me now directly to my last point what what's like your personal review on your path do you have a recipe for success what what do you see also as your three special qualities that have helped you to, to succeed? Uh, I don't really know because I don't feel like I arrived where I wanted to be or I want to be. Um, so it's really, I'm still, um, you would have to ask me when I'm 80. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think... It's always super nice, so nice to meet other people in your field, um, to go to the fairs and to really engage with others doing the same as you, uh, learning from others, learning every day, I guess. Um, as a student or a young person, I think it's good to go abroad. I think traveling is good if you can. Um, to do internships, to try out, to find out what you want to do. And uh, of course, I mean, it's not like I'm standing up and I think I'm successful every day. I mean, you have doubts for sure in your life and in, in your career. And uh, I think it's really important to be persistent. Mm. I mean, you can be, you can be slow. I feel slow sometimes like a turtle with having two kids and I, I do think I could be much quicker. Oh. But then turtles get so far and they get so old. So um, who knows? I mean, what what's better? You can also be slow, but you have to be persistent and, and, um, and you really have to finish your work. I think that's so important because mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, inspiration you can do a lot of mood boards and you can do a lot of sketches. You can really think about a design for five years or something. And it might be the most genius thing, but you have to get it out there. I mean, that's the real, I think that makes the real difference that you really um, realize the things. And then product design is actually a little bit more tough because you have to work with companies and the companies have to really, they have to trust you. Mm. Um, if you are doing a sofa collection, like I'm doing a sofa collection right now, um, but the company really has to believe in the product because I don't know, how much they're in, are investing in it, but I'd say it's somewhere about 60 to 100,000 with yeah, advertisement right. and everything. Mm. So of course I'm only doing one model, we're working on the prototypes, but the prototypes are done in Eastern Europe and they have to be shot in, in Denmark and you have to do the catalogs, which will be printed in China possibly. Mm -hmm. Or somewhere and and it's really a big thing and the upholstery has to be okay for the states but also for somewhere else so the uh, company is going to invest a lot of money into mm -hmm. this product 
And that's the real key, I think, that you find companies that trust in you and that really want to realize the project and invest in the project, but also are on the other side for the pro um, product designer and the designer are trustworthy. So you can really trust them and mm -hmm. they will do it. They will um, realize your idea and be along on the side when you need them, I mean, yeah. Did you do in fact any business coaching during your year? I should have. <laughs> no, I didn't. I um, was I learning by doing. Yeah, yeah, I totally did learning by doing. So in retrospective, I, I don't know, maybe you need some business, business better business coaching. Um, you know what I think, this, this is perhaps typical designer. I think we are more like that learning by doing because I also have a friend who is a coach. Or I think all, all the people who are doing coaching, they also take another coach for everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think... I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe I could have a big brand by now or something, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm happy the way it is right now. Mm. I, mean, I have my two children and, um, and I need some time at home and, and I really, I also want to travel and do things and stuff, but right now I'm, I'm at the right place. Um, but I do see like When I started, there were two or three other design studios, often men. And I do see that there's a little bit of a difference, for sure. They're, they're very um, successful right now. And um, obviously, they work hard. And everybody who's successful has to work hard. I mean, it doesn't come from nowhere. Cool. And, um, but I do see that the strategy behind it was um, sort of more planned than in my way mm. so maybe when I'm 80 yes I would like to support women on their way because I'm also trying to find out how to do it how to combine everything and such um, but there are examples in design and also in architecture but very few when you look at it mm. I hope that'll change in a way Very true. I think you're very ambitious as a woman before you have kids and then people say it and you don't want to believe it but then you do have kids and you have to I don't know you have to figure out how to do it best and then after a while you will succeed I'm sure yeah with, with kids you are more reacting a lot of times you are more reacting they, they are just Sick, uh, sick and at home and you're the mother or you're the father and you have to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, I mean, but I mean, d these amazing designers um, like Patricia Ocula or um, Bella Jongelius who also lived in Berlin and Ignaz and they all have kids, so they yeah. figure it out. And, um, And then it's a little bit of devotion and taking the time to have the time for both. You no, know, what I experienced, I think, especially in the very first years, the kids are the really biggest training for creativity in the whole world. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, because every day you have to develop new ideas. How you keep how you can keep them, what they should do. Or, there are so many things. You always have to be creative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, it it is a little bit a different way, but um, how they're creative. But it's fun to see them explore. Like your uh, painting in the background from your kid. I have so big papers with, from my kids. I love them. Yeah, yeah. It's adult, you never can draw again like kids. Yeah, I, I really, I think it's a very special time. So our firstborn, he, um, he didn't want to draw for such a long time. And in kindergarten, 
they asked him asked us to to give him a um, something to draw which is amazing i mean he sees us draw all the time and leaf is an artist so i mean it's crazy that he didn't want to do it but um but now he's just exploding and it's really fun to see him and he's creating journals and speaking about what he did during the day and um Mm. post something so he's putting down notes and trying to play it on the piano and things even though he doesn't know what notes are but he's he's copying like he's really trying to understand and and that's also interesting how he's exploring the way way things go and work and such so it's really nice Mm -hmm. very great yeah so i think now i can give you the last question. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you would like to add to this interview that we didn't discuss or we didn't speak about? Mm-hmm. There's a lot what you can add and stuff. Um, n- not really, but um, what I think is important as being a German and um, a German designer and a female designer. I do think that, I mean, this is also, this is an era where, where people look at, at women a little bit more and stuff. But from my perspective, I think it's also important to support younger designers in Germany because I see what I noticed is that in Scandinavia, a lot of young designers are supported mm-hmm. by uh, companies out of the country. Uh, who trust them to to do nice work and I sometimes wonder how there's like um, big brands Danish brands or Italian brands or whatever but in Germany I think one should support younger uh, designers as what I'm do you mean with supporting so to give them some work give them some work yeah Especially now, I mean this is a very special time and um, with COVID going on. And for young studios, I think it will be also quite tough. And I do think that um, it should be used as a tool for creativity, a chance to like work with young artists in all fields. I mean, musicians, whatever, painters and stuff, uh, creatives, young creatives. I think this is really the time. And it's also the time to think about women in design. Luckily, people are st- starting to do this, and they're also rediscovering older women who have been doing this for all the time, but they haven't been noticed. And um, and I do think, yeah, that one should support each other in this time. And if you have the possibility, you should do this. And especially in Germany, I think that people should really look at what they have as cultural heritage, not all only Bauhaus but also what's there, what's happening right now. Who, who are the new young generations? I mean, we have a lot of people who are quite successful and doing well, but I also think that the next generation should be appreciated and also noticed. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done there for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then I really thank you very, very much for this wonderful interview. Thank you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I thank all the viewers for watching us. And I really hope that you also enjoy all the other interviews because they are really wonderful designer in the interviews with very great life paths. Yeah, and totally. so, I'm looking forward to it, especially because I heard that um, I am I'm one of the younger ones. So uh, it's nice to listen to somebody who's older, how they did it, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's really, and I think really all have different points. So so something very special. So it's really interesting. It's a good chance. Yeah. yeah, it's always nice to talk to people, for sure. So... I thank you. Bye for you now. Bye. Happy New Year. (laughs) Happy New Year too. Yes.